This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. A full 15 games on the slate for tonight in MLB baseball. We're going to be breaking down some strikeout props with Rob Friedman, pitching ninja, getting his favorite strikeout props for tonight. I'm going to go through some money lines I like in NFL week number one as well. A jam-packed day, a lot of good pitchers. Let's dive on in and get you set for Tuesday's action. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Rob Freeman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. You can find him at Peacock, MLB, Nesson, MLB on Fox, everywhere you are consuming the best baseball content. Rob, happy Tuesday to you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Dude, it sounds like I am everywhere. What is up with that? What is up with that? How did this happen? Uh, like, I have no idea. Like, I know you don't sleep, so I don't even need to bother asking that, but like, are you secretly kind of excited for October when this, because you get less baseball, but it's like higher leverage baseball. The schedule's more condensed. Are you secretly a bit excited about that? I was just talking about that last night, like how you're running down towards the end of the season. And then every game is so important and you get yeah. to see the best of the best pitching at their best. I'm um, against the best. Yeah, absolutely excited about that. That is Without a doubt, an awesome time of the year. I like all of it, though. Like, yeah. this is all fun. Last night was kind of eh, pitching-wise, but <laughs> but but today, lots of good pitching. Yeah, I had Ranger Suarez over four and a half. Uh, it was good, looking good in the first the first inning. Did not look so good after that, though. Thankfully, I was in bed, so not too frustrated. Uh, I got to avoid that frustration there and just uh, avoid that overall. So two straight disappointments uh, for me with Ranger Suarez. Maybe we'll note that uh, for <laughs> next time around, potentially. We'll see. I was going to say, you're a Ranger Suarez guy. Last time we talked about him, too. Apparently, uh, <laughs> maybe we'll make that past tense, but I still like it. We'll, we'll, we'll just to maybe pedal back at least on publicly being an arranger Suarez, uh, for the near future. Okay, Rob, it's a fun slate for tonight. We got a lot of good pitchers. We got a really fun match in Arizona, Aaron Nola versus Zach Gallon. That's a pretty fun one. Got some other big names in the slate. Maybe we see Lucas Giolito get back to slowly getting back to where he was previously. Brady Singer's on this slate. I like a lot of names here. Where are you looking at in terms of strikeout props uh, for this Tuesday offering? Well, you mentioned some of my favorite guys. Zach Gallon, North Carolina guy. I went to North Carolina, <laughs> so you got to love him. Lucas, great dude. Um, what I'm doing is I have two nice parlays. I'm going with six and nine K uh, props. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like that sometimes. It's Tuesday. Like we got to liven it up, right? I love it. Yeah. I got Jesus Lizardo, the Jesus lizard at six Ks <laughs> or more and Shane McClanahan at nine Ks or more. And then I have Brady Singer for six Ks or more and Aaron Nola for nine Ks or more. So I like all those guys. Singer's been pitching great. Like I mean, he's, his two seamers been fantastic. So uh, yeah, he's figured it all out. Going to that uh, that first game, you got the Rays versus the Marlins. Uh, the parlay of those two together with Lazardo at six plus and McClanahan at nine plus, it's plus four eighty four. So pretty long odds. But Rob, both these guys have a lot of juice. Obviously, Lazardo working back from an injury. What have you seen from him since he came back? Are you feeling good about what you've seen from him so far uh, since his return to the mound? Yeah, you know, always a little inconsistency with him. But when he's on, he can strike out everybody. Like like dude, stuff is electric really, really uh, top end stuff when he's on. And I'm hoping he's on today. Like, even if he's not on six K should be doable for my man. Yeah. And I feel no need to ask you about Shane McClanahan. I mean, yeah. nine makes a lot of sense for him. I think that one's, that one's pretty obvious. Yeah, he did. A, he had a little bit of a slump and then last outing, I thought he was throwing as well as ever. So I don't know if it's just like, you know, it, it, this season's a long season. Sometimes you have that. He looked at the top of his game last time out, so it would not surprise me to see another great outing from him. Yeah, absolutely. It is a long season. I think that the the fun thing about it being a long season is when the guys who put up absurd results the entire time are doing that. That's kind of what Aaron Nola has done. And Nola's on the road facing off against Arizona. Not a bad spot for him. Nine is a big number, but Nola gets there pretty often. So um, what's the key for you in the aggression and getting to the nine plus strikeouts for Nola here for tonight? It's really is it, when his knuckle curve is on, which it has been, he can like, it's, it's not a hittable pitch because it meshes so well with his other stuff. I mean, he tunnels really well. He's aggressive. Um, if I see that he's going to strike out, he'll strike out the house. Like that dude 
when he's on is can strike out as many hitters as anybody in baseball. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's plus 804, the uh, combo of Singer at six plus strikeouts and Nola at nine plus strikeouts. And I found myself gravitating towards Singer a lot recently, and I find no reason to stop for tonight. I mean, I think that, is he just an underrated pitcher? Is that kind of the, the, as simple as it is with Brady Singer right now? He is. I think as of late, he's turned himself into an ace. He always had that stuff. You never knew how it was, when it was going to figure it out. He's figured it out. Like, you watch his two-seamer, and how he dominates a game with that. He gets so many Ks looking because people give up, hitters give up on the on the pitch, and it catches his own constantly. He does it over and over again. And at this point, definitely not a fluke. And he can throw a slider off that. He can, you know, he he's he's figured it out. Like I, I love watching him pitch, get some great highlights from him because there's nothing better than like a front door sinker where somebody's jumping out of the way. Um, right. I love it. Right, absolutely. Well, I want to talk to you about another two seamer here in a second. But the uh, the pick the picks for Rob for tonight, uh, he likes Lazardo and McClanahan to go uh, for six plus and nine plus strikeouts respectively in the same parlay with Brady Singer and Aaron Nola both to go uh, at six plus and nine plus respectively. Now that two seamer I was going to talk to you about is George Kirby. George Kirby's facing off here at Detroit. I want to talk to you about that entire game because we got Kirby on one side, Matt Manning on the other, and. I liked uh, Kirby's strikeout prop earlier. It has moved aggressively. It is now up to six and a half with plus 124 on the over. My projections do still show value on that new number, but there may be some lower numbers still lingering out there for George Kirby. I do see a five and a half right now uh, at a different book. So when you're looking at George Kirby, is that sinker a new pitch? Because like it, it seems it didn't. I don't think I was seeing it as much earlier on this year, but recently it seems like he's been leaning on it and it seems like it's been disgusting. Yeah. I think he's just figured out when we're to throw it. Um, yeah. It's I like that with a lot of guys that are coming up. The thing I love about Kirby is he doesn't walk folks. Like he was like that in college. He had the, I think he, he had the, the national record or national high at least for a strikeout to walk ratio in college. And he's taking it to the pros. Like the dude is around the zone with good stuff and you're seeing results now. So he's, he's another guy who's figured it out. I think your two guys in that game are, are, are young pitchers that are, that are figuring stuff out at the big league level, which makes it so much fun to watch. Like I love watching these guys get better. And Kirby pitches like, a, uh, like a, an ace veteran because of his just demeanor and his, and his elite command. Yeah. You mentioned the efficiency. Uh, so you mentioned the, the lack of walks in the time since he, you know, started leaning more on that sinker. It's a seven start sample, 3.47 pitches per plate appearance. That is like average is around four. He's about a half pitch below that, which allows him to get deeper in games. You know, it doesn't, doesn't have the longest pitch count, but like, because he's so efficient, he can still work his way out there. So even at six and a half, I think there is value on Kirby uh, plus plus one twenty four twenty four over six and a half there. But if you can find five and a half, I would gravitate that way. And like I said, there are still some five and a halfs out there. Matt Manning not posted yet at FanDuel, but elsewhere you can get up at four and a half. Uh, the over is plus 115. I like that one too, Rob. Um, I think that since Manning came back up, it's only been five starts, but especially the past four, I think he's looked really good. What has been your impression of Matt Manning in this most recent stretch with Detroit? Um, he's really good. And dude has incredible upside. I thought last outing he was brilliant. What do you have, like eight Ks? And uh, yeah, and and his slider has a something like a forty-seven percent whiff rate. So yeah, like you combine that with his fastball, and and to do that at this level, I think I also like his curveball too. It's a pretty curveball. So yeah, I think I think that's a good pick. I like him as a pitcher. His best his best years are to come. Like he is going to be in there. He's going to be a, an ace for a long time. So's Kirby. Like yeah. those are two really good pitchers. It's a fun matchup. I plan to be watching that. Today. I plan to watch it too. I plan to watch that uh, Lazardo versus McClanahan game as well. I mean, that that that's a, a pretty fun one as well. So littered with fun games across the entire slate for tonight. That is Rob Freeman. Make sure you check out his Twitter account at Pitching Ninja. Check him out wherever he is, uh, everywhere else as well, to get his analysis on the games and check out tonight. Hopefully a lot of gifts from that uh, Miami versus Tampa Bay game and the Detroit versus Seattle game. Rob, enjoy the baseball for tonight. Thank you for coming on for today. We'll talk to you once again next week. My pleasure as always. All righty. That is Rob Freeman. Once again, check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja to get all of his insights and get hopefully some sweet, sweet, sweet gifts of uh, those Manning pitches, Lazardo, Aaron Nola, Finger, 
for tonight. We're going to talk about NFL Week 1 in just one second to get you a couple money lines that my numbers like after some movement we've seen the past couple of weeks in just a second. But first, NFL kickoff still a few weeks away. You can get on the action now on FanDuel Sportsbook with their NFL Super Win bonus. Right now, anyone who places at least a $50 Super Bowl winner bet We'll get $5 back for each win their team has during the regular season. There are also a ton of other futures markets available like team win totals, division winners, player props, and so much more. There's no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states only. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $50, restricts the supply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's take this at NFL money lines that are showing value in week number one. We haven't talked NFL week one in a couple of weeks now, but uh, discussed earlier on, I was on the Giants at plus six and a half and the Texans plus eight and a half. Texans were at eight at FanDuel. You can get eight and a half elsewhere. That has now moved to eight and a half at FanDuel as well. So if you're betting exclusively at FanDuel, you can get them at that number there. Now the Giants down to five and a half against the Texans. So that one uh, no longer in play, but there has been a lot of movement elsewhere. And it's put me on a couple of money lines for week one. Those are the Browns, the plus 112 against the Panthers, and the Cardinals, the plus 150 against the Chiefs. And yes, this is accounting for Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins suspensions. That is accounted for in the numbers, potentially over accounted for in the lines. Let's start here with the Browns. I love the infrastructure around the quarterback, everything else outside of quarterback for this game. The defense here should be pretty sick. I've got uh, the Browns projected to rank third in pass defensive efficiency. They've got guys who can disrupt up front. Obviously, Miles Garrett is uh, chief among them, but it's a pretty good defensive front. Carolina has a lot of fresh faces on the offensive line. That is a good thing for them. That is a good thing. They needed fresh faces after what happened last year, but it also may take some time for the for them to get cohesion along that unit, for them to gel up front. I think that opens the door for this Browns defense. The defense, though, not a huge part of the equation for me in terms of uh, my betting model. Obviously, offense is weighted up because it's more predictable, tends to matter more. Um, so I care more about offense. I do like the pieces around Jacoby Brissett. I actually have Cleveland projected to be a more efficient overall offense with Brissett than the Panthers with Baker, mostly due to the infrastructure around the quarterback. I have the, the Panthers passing offense projected to be better, but... Other stuff does favor uh, Cleveland here. And I like Baker a lot. I think that he uh, is a talented guy who's gotten a bit underrated at this point. I hope he does really well. I just have questions about the rest of the team, given the change along the offensive line. Uh, the money line here is plus 112. I've got this basically as a coin flip. Uh, plus two and a half is minus 112. So 52.8% implied odds there. The implied odds at plus 112 are 47%. I've got about three percentage points of edge uh, in both markets. So you can go either way with this one. I would not push back on the plus two and a half if you want to go there. Uh, but I'd rather avoid the issues with key numbers at two and a half and go with the money line here at plus 112. So for me, the preferred route for betting the Browns week one, taking advantage of potentially an overreaction to the quarterback situation, I am okay with going with them at plus 112 in the Baker Mayfield revenge game. The line of thinking is a bit different with the Cardinals in terms of the money line versus the spread. They're at plus three and a half at minus 118. So I am getting a win, an out, a win on this bet if they lose by a field goal or rather than, than a push. And I also, um, even with the with the Browns one, plus two and a half, I'm not getting the field goal at all. Plus 150 on the money line is pretty long. And I do think that they are live here. I've got this game with the Chiefs favored by 1.23 points. So they are the, the rightful favorites. I just think they might be favored by a bit too much. And part of that is, Turnover on the Chiefs offense. Not only are they changing out key pieces, but they're doing it with Juju Smith Schuster and Marquez Valdez Scantling missing a bit of time in camp. That's a tough task if you're trying to reacclimate to a new offense. And 
it hasn't been like long stretches, but they have missed some time there. This will be a different offense. I have faith in them. I think that it is a kind of intriguing offense, honestly, with the way they want to run things, the big bodies they've got that should be able to allow them to run the ball pretty efficiently. I think this will work out for them, but it is a big change. Cardinals obviously have big changes too. No DeAndre Hopkins here, no Christian Kirk, Marquise Brown in the mix. That's a lot of changeover, but this offense, when Kyler Murray has been healthy, has been very good, very efficient. And that's been with turnover previously on this offense as well. So I'm accounting for all this. I actually have the Cardinals projected to be a worse offense this year than they were last year, even when Hopkins is healthy. So the healthy, the the, the not healthy, I should say, when he's back, the fully realized version of this Cardinals offense in my numbers is worse than what they had for the full season last year. So I feel like I'm being a bit conservative with their with their with their offensive projections, even then though I can't get to this number. I have the Cardinals win odds at 45%. That's up from 40% implied at this number. That's a pretty decent gap, and it's one that I'm okay with. I don't mind taking the three and a half, especially if you can get down uh, closer to minus 110 on the three and a half. But for me, I do like the money line here. So adding on uh, to our week one sl- week one card, we got the, the Giants plus six and a half, Texans plus eight and a half. I'm going to add on the Browns money line at plus 112 and the Cardinals money line at plus 150. I think both those advantageous numbers where we can buy into teams and potentially uh, react to overreactions for some guys missing for those two teams. They've been a nightmare at spreadsheets uh, because of this, but I do think that uh, I think we're counting enough for the absences that both those teams have for week number one. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Want to once again recommend checking out Rob Freeman at Pitching Ninja on Twitter. Check him out on Peacock, MLB, Nesson, MLB on Fox, everywhere across the board. Really good stuff. Check out the uh, guys he mentioned too. Jesus Lazardo, Shane McClanahan, Brady Singer, Aaron Nola. And I've got Matt Manning uh, over four and a half and George Kirby. Hopefully you can get five and a half still on him. Uh, Again, I think you can at Caesars book. So make sure to check that out. And then we'll see about the NFL week one money lines as well. I'll be talking some more baseball for tomorrow on the show and also going through some racing bets. We'll talk about some NASCAR, talk about hopefully some Formula One and maybe some Xfinity series too. Our episode with Dr. Ed Fang is going to be up on Thursday for this week versus um, uh, instead of Wednesday, we have a guest, uh, Parker stats of wars will be joining us uh, for this week. So we're going to push things back one day to get his insights on week one. That should be up probably around seven o'clock Wednesday night. So not uh, fully into Thursday, but either way, make sure to subscribe to covering the spread to get that right. As it's posted, try to get in those lines, uh, whenever you can. And, uh, also check out the FanDuel podcast network on Twitter at FanDuel podcast. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB bets for tonight. Good luck to you, the NFL Week 1 bets, too. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for some more baseball and some racing here on the show. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 